Hello everyone, and welcome to the 96th episode of the Poorly Planned Podcast. I hit that sixths with a lot of a lot of enunciation, you know. Oh, yeah. Six sixths. Yeah, it probably sounds there's like a, I'm a proper sp- snake <laughs> spitting all over the mic. Um, well, <laughs> which I am. Yeah, it's, it's what we're about. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a sign of my hatred for you. you know? <laughs> we're back. Uh, wait, how do we? <laughs> wait, I, I, I kind of you so, threw so me off my groove a little. Um, <laughs> And welcome to the 96th episode. My name is Benedict. You may know me better as BHL Hudson. Here we talk about movies, TV shows, a bunch of nonsense. With me, as always, is my friend, co-host, and late buddy. I, 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 I put money on my bed, betting that's what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do apologize. Yeah, no, um, Freddy, was, Freddy was late because he was doing something silly like seeing his father or something. It's kind of yeah. lame. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> Who does <Please>? that? <laughs> that's so last year. <laughs> And so, um, I, you'll be happy to know, though, I've been getting in the, in the traditional pod spirit over here, because I was thinking, like, okay, it's gonna be late, I'll just, I'll have a little, I'll have a little cheeky snack or something, you know, something a little unhealthy, because, you uh-huh. know, I'm about to pod, so, uh-huh. you know, why not? Of so, I have, I have this bag of chips, and then you are, in fact, 20 minutes late, so I've just been sitting here for 20 minutes munching chips, and I feel terrible <laughs> about myself going to the pod, so, I hope really? you're happy well, I, I buy... I biked for 15 minutes, so I feel like oh, really so you're you're sporty like, actually. So yeah, okay, it's the okay. it's you're the fat out of shape loser to my fit father <laughs> to my having... cool jock, <laughs> good man <laughs> to my father having Goodman. <laughs> um, to compensate though, I am having a little bit of applesauce because I'm like an 80 year old man. But I was thinking applesauce. The chips are like a like a like you're a... dipping the chips in the applesauce. No. <laughs> God, that might be a bit of a show, you know. Like, <laughs> God, wait, give me 20 more minutes. <laughs> Because when we used to record the pod, we would have a giant bag of chips. And, I mean, we still will mm-hmm. when we're, like, recording together. Oh, yeah, when we're like, in person. <laughs> yeah, we would ASMR the mic a lot. So, anyway, I thought it was it was, it was a nice touch for, for, you know, the original pod fans. They, they oh, yeah. definitely oh, really yeah. care. Um, <laughs> so, today, you know, we gotta do it. It's a mini review this episode. Oh, brilliant. Um, but, so, yes. not to fear, there are... <laughs> Time codes down below, and okay, um, I was about to stress and and scream. Yeah, they weren't. and we have, um, among other things, we have coming up. We're gonna be talking about Rick and Morty. We're gonna be talking about Mortal Kombat, Black Widow, the KSI show, Ooh. and lots of other things. Ooh. And I will say, yeah. I've I've kind of I've got like five or six that I've titled big ones, where like we can kind of go a little in depth, talk about it, and then I have like seven or eight of just like little things we can just do like one sentence things, so we don't you know. The pod doesn't okay, go on okay. for eight billion years, so uh-huh. that would that would that would bore people. That's not what we're about. <laughs> so yeah, these are just the things we've watched for the past month or so. Little little mini reviews, and uh, yeah, their time goes down below. So let's just jump into it. First things first, with Rick and Morty season five, which I've been watching. Um, I've, I've seen, I believe, the first three episodes of that as well. Ah, uh, well, I will say, <laughs> I will <laughs> say. Episodes. Slurp of the episodes. <laughs> I will say um, a very in-depth analysis you bring. <laughs> I will say. <laughs> All right, that's Rick and Morty. Let's move on. <laughs> the um, I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. I think you are too. We've been watching yeah. it for for a while. It's a very fun, very you know. I mean, it's kind of. It hasn't been ruined, but like talking about how you're a big Rick and Morty fan was sort of no, yeah, ruined for a bit because it'll, it'll, it'll yeah it'll the put meme. you down in the food chain. Yeah, because it's like it's so intellectual, but like. You know, but, but it's so but it's intellectual. Is, guys. <laughs> but God, I feel so smart. <laughs> like it's funny. I do feel. I do it's... feel. I'm the Rick to your Mr. Poopy Butthole. Okay. Um. I feel like you're. You're you're heavy Jerry. Heavy Jerry <laughs> energy is what I'm getting from you. And I guess that makes me. I won't me say what I am, Beth. But, but you. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean. I mean. I don't. I don't I mean, mean that. Unless. I, I mean. I. <laughs> Uh, uh, why do you gotta make it weird, dude? <laughs> <laughs> why do you gotta be the best to my Jerry? Um, but, like, I do think it's more... It has, you know... It explores more interesting concepts and, like, has more creativity than a lot of, you know, adult animation kind of shows. Or, like, yeah, yeah, you definitely. know, more mature animation shows. Um, and I think that's season five so far. The strongest point of it has been basically the episodes you've seen. The concepts, I think, were, really like, classic Rick and Morty. Like, really fun. The... I think it's the first episode where they have, like, the world where time moves differently. So he comes back and then, like, centuries have passed and he's, like, this oh, yeah, myth yeah, and I legend do quite and stuff. Like that. like, that was super yeah, yeah, fun yeah. and clever. And the Planetina one, the one that's, like, a Captain Planet kind of parody, that was also pretty fun. Um, mm-hmm. But then, I don't think you've seen these yet, but the more... 
I think it's episodes I, four and five are pretty weirdly bad, actually, which I I'm surprised to say because I was enjoying it. I, 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 thought it was, I did I did I didn't love the um ah oh, what's it called? Wait, let me let me quickly get my HBO up. You you keep talking. Let me. But yeah, I I thought the first I can't remember what the other episode is besides the Planetina and the like time one was but i thought the first three were pretty good i was i was enjoying it it was pretty fun but then the episodes four and five are just especially episode four was quite poor in my opinion it was like the first episode i've seen in a while Mm -hmm. where i was like that was a that was not a very good episode and i was like it felt like it was written by different people like genuinely it felt like a completely different writing scene which i don't think it was which is kind of strange but um, I mean, it might be, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but it, it's this one, and I mean, I guess I won't spoil it because you're going to watch it, but it's about this, um, Morty's sperm become, like, um, monsters, and hey, it's a whole thing. Oh, yeah, I, I, I actually, I started watching that one, and then I clicked off because I think I had to go, but it also wasn't that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it was somewhere to be. It was, and it's just like, it feels like they kind of just, it's sort of, I'm going to make an epic analogy here, but you know how in, um, the latest Conor McGregor press conference, it kind of felt like mm. Connor was doing like an impression of Conor McGregor. Uh-huh. It was like it was sort of, and it yeah. felt a bit like someone was doing an impression of Rick and Morty. Like they were trying to make like a Rick and Morty type episode, and like it's just like it's weird and it has different stuff. And like the jokes were really like corny and like not self aware, like they usually are. And like yeah. it was just, I don't know. It just it felt, and the characters were weirdly like not in character. And I've seen like there's a fan theory where it's like. Um, this is actually a parallel universe where it turns into evil Morty, so that's why all the characters are acting out of character. And if it doesn't end up being like that, it's pretty embarrassing that fans are coming up with fan theories that this is set <laughs> yeah, in a different that universe. Try, the try, is trying so to bad. justify the, sh- the shitness of the show. <laughs> like, yeah, it's that's... still, I don't know, this episode was still fine. Like, it still was like, okay, past the time, but it was a little bit, it's a bit like The Office, I guess, where like the later seasons is like, yeah, it's, it's fine, but like, I, I wasn't like crazy about it. So I don't know, so far, it's been a mixed bag. I'm hoping they kind of reel it back in because the first few episodes mm-hmm. I actually really enjoyed, and then the latest, the later ones, I'm like, this is not up to the usual, the usual Rick standard. Uh huh. <laughs> it's very Morty, but but less so Rick. <laughs> it's a bit of a Jerry Freddy kind of combination, you know. Ah <laughs> uh, f- I, 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 uh, uh, f- I've run out of applesauce. <laughs> on the contrary, I, I spilled <laughs> applesauce on my own kneecap. Um, oh God. <laughs> okay. The kneecap. You can you can start talking about yours while I get like a paper towel or something. Oh, well, I mean, the only real things I've got here are, I've, we already mentioned some of the ones we're going to talk about, but I do believe it is in fact time for, and cue the music, Freddy's Anime Hour. I hope the music was cued, BHL. Um, if it wasn't, I will be leaving the podcast shortly. But there's there's a few things, and I've watched these from, like, this is all the way back in May, like late May that this list started, but I just decided not to put it for the last pod. But I did, in fact, go to the cinema and watch Demon Slayer, the movie. And this is the first time I've ever seen an anime uh, movie in, in the cinema. And I went, I watched the Demon Slayer Mugen Train movie. <laughs> a genuine... <laughs> stop, Mugen stop Train? It. I see, I that see, sounds I like... see you. <laughs> Mugen Train sounds something like, like a, a train that Thulis takes to work. The Mugen Train. <laughs> Oh, where are you at, Thulis? <laughs> oh, I, Thulis, is on the Mugen train. <laughs> Sorry, I hope you're happy ahead. with yourself. <laughs> Mocking a movie that's genuinely so upsetting in the end. Oh, God, it's frozen on you eating your applesauce. It's just... <laughs> I was like, I love how applesauce is kind of just for old people and babies. So I'm like, it's delicious, though. It's great. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Go ahead. It's the continuation of the Demon Slayer first season that's on Netflix, I think. Very, very good. Um anime show mm. and then yeah it, it's basically it's like one arc that takes place on this mugen train and yeah it's just just like genuinely amazing animation and uh like soundtrack also and then the end is genuinely the most heartbreaking or one of the most heartbreaking anime moments i've ever seen and it's just ah, oh, it killed me it's just one of the saddest anime endings of all time i, I mean i don't want to spoil it for you because i know you'll watch it it's totally fine but genuinely <laughs> But yeah, like like one of the one of the main characters, he 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 sacrifices himself towards the end, and it's just, ah, uh, it, it's it's heartbreaking. It's genuinely heartbreaking. It drew a Fidelgar tear. It it almost drew a Fidelgar tear. It did draw a Fidelgar nervous fart. <laughs> of course, as most sad moments do. I was, I believe you saw this with your girlfriend, so you were like, can't 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 Fidelgar tear in here. Yeah, I did, yeah. I'm surprised she wanted to come with. 
That was um. <laughs> she totally wasn't uh, forced via chains to come to come with. <laughs> a, a brilliant movie that I think everyone should watch, especially if you're a fan of the the usual Freddy's Anime usual. Hour content. Exactly. No. Yeah. Oh, there Definitely. you go. Well, speaking of things that I think everyone should watch, um, <laughs> their backs, because I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so late. <laughs> <laughs> News the next morning, Rachel Hudson revealed as mass serial killer yeah. through stupid YouTube prank. <laughs> Just a very general threat. Just to everyone out there, watch your backs. <laughs> yeah. Um, you never know who BHL <laughs> might strike at next. <laughs> now, um, this morning actually, which is a bit of a, a bit of a strange movie to watch, like in the morning. But I watched Shutter Island. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I think I is that the decap one. It is in fact the decap, and a horrifying revelation I had when the Ruffman showed up very early and throughout the entire film. He doesn't just really show up; he's a main character. <laughs> but Mark Ruffalo <laughs> is there, and um, God. Yeah, really. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it took like several years off my life, probably. But um, <laughs> fan- amazing film. It's a Scorsese movie, and it is. I mean, it's not like his other films that I've seen. At least, it's a psychological horror thriller kind of thing. Um, I don't think I have seen it. You know, I think I started watching it, and then like the Wi-Fi cut out or something. I really want to watch it. <laughs> well, because I, I started watching it yesterday while I was like. Because I was in bed and I was going to, like, go to sleep. And I was like, oh, I'll watch, I'll watch something on Netflix or whatever. And then I put on Shutter Island. And I was like, yeah, probably probably not the right thing to watch, like, at midnight. Like, <laughs> right mm. before I go to bed. <laughs> so instead I did watch Austin Powers, which we'll talk about. But this morning, <laughs> then I, watched, I, I finished Shutter Island. And it's amazing. It's so creepy. And it's the most unsettling film I've seen in a long time. Like, it is... It really made me feel, <laughs> I just like, watched Austin Powers. Unpleasant and, like creeped out and just like uh, so it's basically mm. if you don't know also you're totally frozen okay you're you're Look. back kind of okay good 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 um but it's so it's basically it's dicaprio he goes to a he's a u.s marshal and he goes with ruffalo to investigate the disappearance or the escape of a patient at a mental institute on this island okay and then he discovers the most horrifying thing of all is that ben kingsley is there and so then he oh has God. to <laughs> he has poor to, cap he has to overcome this deep tragedy in his life <laughs> Um, no, and then he discovers, you know, (laughs) lots of other, you know, strange happenings are going on. And I like, I won't spoil it for you, but you know that there's a twist coming. Like the whole, it's not a spoiler to say that there's a twist. Like the whole movie, like something's off and they're building, they're putting these little threads in there. And like, you definitely know Uh something's coming. uh uh I did not predict the actual twist that happened. And it, it was like. Yeah, it was like, it's a mind, it's an absolute, there's no other word to describe it other than mind f-. Like, it is an absolute. Uh, God damn it. And uh, the, whole, the whole ending, and ah, God, and it's so creepy, too. It's such a, it doesn't have a lot of jump scares. Like, it has a couple, but, like, it's more just, like, it really it, puts you on edge. It's, like, it's yeah, really. It's the, over, it's the overall, like, atmosphere or what. Yeah, and just, like, and there's so many subtle things that, like, I don't know, subtle things like the, there are continuity errors that, like, you notice at first and you're like, is that a mistake? But it's so, like, ironically, it's, like, consistent that it's clearly meant to have this effect of, like, something's off and, like, the mind, uh-huh, something in the uh-huh. mind is strange here. And it's, like, um, and it's so, it has one of the most brutal scenes, like, just, like, emotionally in movie history that I've seen, at least, oh, um, that involves the cap in some, in some water. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> it just involves the cap. Also, I have to say, I think genuinely, and this might be... This might be just recency bias because I just saw it, but I think Leonardo DiCaprio mm. might be like, might be the best actor of our generation. Maybe like he is because I, I was just I mean, thinking like he in, certainly has range in everything I've seen him in. He's like, and this one especially is such a layered character, and like he's just mm-hmm. phenomenal in everything. I think like he definitely. I mean, okay, I don't know who he was up against, but I feel like he should have won an Oscar for this because it's like. One of the most amazing performances I've ever seen. There's so many, there's so much depth to it. And like he has, it does that in a lot of his performance. I was just like, this guy is like, it's not a revelation, but I was like, he is incredible. Like <laughs> I found this new yeah. up and coming talent, Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know if you've heard <laughs> so of I, him. I found this guy off Craigslist. He's called <laughs> Leo DiCaprio or something. I don't know. It was just, it was incredible. And Kingsley's great. Um, Ruffalo's great. It's just, 
Yeah, great film. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, Ruffalo's mediocre, as he <laughs> Ruffalo's is. passable. He's definitely not one of the greatest. In that. <laughs> He's also good. I don't know. You know what's funny? When I see Ruffalo in a film, I can't really separate the Ruffalo-ness from him. Like, it, it almost seems like it's Mark Ruffalo. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. He's great. And he's like, he's a very convincing actor. But in this one, he's just like, mm, what are you thinking, boss? And I'm just like, it's it's Ruffalo. It's 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 definitely Ruffalo. <laughs> this is just Ruffalo that walked onto set. Please. <laughs> but anyway, I won't spoil it. But it's an amazing, absolutely insane twisty film so check it out all right all right i i do i think i will check it out <laughs> on your recommendation only but yeah of course sounds pretty good actually <laughs> well now that we're on the topic of um psychological horror kind of thing oh. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <Also> psychological horror <laughs> um this is this is not really a movie but this is something i watched on youtube i don't know if, i don't think i've talked about it on the pod yet as a mini review but i watched something a, a youtube video called what pretending to be crazy looks like oh yeah we we've definitely talked about it in our personal lives yeah no if yeah and i've i've watched this whole like back catalog of videos i went on a bit of a binge it's yeah i, I mean so you, you you've seen it as well and it's just it's just really really interesting i feel it's it's about the it's the guy who shot up a school in i forget what state mm. uh in america and how he basically tries to as, it's also really creepy that it's all like I mean this is not based on a real story this is just like live recording right yeah so it's like a documentary um but so how he how he commits these this like awful awful crime and then he basically instead of like getting uh, the death sentence or or something like that he tries to plead insanity right and mm -hmm. everyone knows it's bullshit and then it's just like the analytical breakdown of how how that whole thing is is taken care of by the police and, and stuff like that it's just it's so interesting i really i really like it's rare that i sit there in a documentary and <laughs> and i my attention doesn't fleet away but it, it did not hear <laughs> yeah and especially a documentary that's like basically one shot for the whole thing exactly and yeah. no i if you like that i highly recommend like basically all of his other videos are very similar mm -hmm. um videos and yeah it's a fascinating Clicking on it, I thought it was going to be more of a breakdown of his behavior, but it's actually more of a breakdown mm -hmm. of, like, interrogation tactics and, like, questioning tactics and how uh -huh. the cops, like, yeah, maneuver yeah, yeah. this way to... And, like, how at certain points they 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 know he's, you know, faking, but they have to uh, play into it to get a certain response or to bring something up later. And it's it's fascinating, yeah. And it's also... Yeah, it's all, it's all like... It's like the jigsaw puzzle of, like, how to deal with that, like legally and also how to yeah I, I don't it's just it's very very good yeah it's very well done and i feel like it's also not that i consume a lot of like those netflix documentaries about serial killers but i feel like from the little i've seen of those i feel like this is more just a, better made in a weird way of like even though it doesn't have the same production value but it's just it's so much more to the point it's like mm -hmm. it's it's just very well crafted and it's it's almost more tasteful i guess if that makes sense because like yeah some of these things where they really try to dramatize it and this is just like there's just like, there's also something about it being real footage that makes it. No, yeah, exactly. So, it's like horrible to to watch, and it's also like very interesting at the same time to see someone like in a in an actual situation like that and how they respond and how the mm -hmm. cops have to try to navigate it. It's it's very yeah yeah fascinating stuff. And also also like the in the beginning of the video where he like sits there and is like oh the demons made me do it, and then as soon as the cops leave. His like demeanor completely changes and he like goes back to normal. Yeah. And then he spots the camera and then he goes back to like acting crazy. It's like oh. Yeah. It's a funny thread throughout all of those um videos that for some reason they seem to think that they're not being filmed at all times. And it's like <laughs> if you're like, like, what? <laughs> yeah, do you think that if you're taken into police custody, you probably just assume you're like, you know, Obviously, they're terrible people. I'm not trying to, like, give them advice or something, but it's just, like, it's strange that they assume that they suddenly... <laughs> Tomorrow, there will be no criminals caught, thanks to your advice. <laughs> yeah, it's like they, they assume that no one can see them. And it's also... There's one of them that is so crazy, like, one of the craziest ones, um, mm. which is about... So a woman murdered the this other woman, and, and she... Okay in like the 80s or something and she bit her corpse like in a fit of rage she like she bit her as she was murdering her and then she became like a, a police officer or something or like a member of the police and so for like 20 or 30 years this case went unsolved and then they got new technology that could like solve dna 
And they had like, oh, they, so they went back Jesus. to that case and they found out that the person who was like, who had committed that crime 30 years ago was working with them. And so they have to like interrogate their coworker, like without letting her know that they know it's the craziest thing. And it's like, and if she hadn't oh done God, that, that, if is... she hadn't bitten the person, she wouldn't have ever been would, caught. Would, it was yeah. like, is the most insane story. Ah, there are a lot of great like videos. They're so well made. So I, yeah, uh-huh. definitely definitely check out more yeah i mean we won't get all into all the detective and law stuff now but isn't there something about like when a crime's committed after like 20 25 years like you can't be charged for it or something yeah something like that but it yeah i don't it was uh, maybe that doesn't maybe that doesn't count for murder yeah well regardless it wasn't it wasn't under that that kind of uh-huh. um law okay, okay, okay but yeah wild stuff so yeah no very very interesting youtube series i i i can't I'll, I'll look at the guy's name, actually, because their channel deserves... I mean, they're blowing up like it's, crazy, so... It's like JCS Criminal Psychology or something like that. Um, Yeah, that, no, yeah that's it. JCS Criminal Psychology Ooh, n- on nailed, YouTube. Great. Nailed it. Well, well-made, very well-made videos. Um, well, then... This is a very long time ago, but I... I mean, not very... <laughs> this is 20 years ago, but um, I watched <laughs> the new Mortal Kombat movie that came out. Um, I kind of want to watch this. Not just because like, I've heard... The Mortal Kombat movies in the past have been god awful, but I also kind of <laughs> like the Mortal Kombat universe. It's based on what you like, what you're saying there. I think you would like it because it's basically what that is. Like, as you know, it's bad. You know, it's going to be bad. Uh-huh. But it's like it but it's does. Enjoyable. Yeah, it's a bit like um, what was it? Godzilla versus Kong. Where like the one thing you want it to do right, it does right. You know, like it gets. It has the. Okay, so it's 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 proper violent or yeah it's super uh, it's super violent like it's exactly like the fatalities like this over-the-top insane um violence and like it's super cheesy and um yeah like i don't know that it's funny the action like the first action scene is actually like genuinely pretty incredible like it's very very like well made and the rest of the action the film is kind of like it's a bit just like generic goofy yeah i mean not that bad but like but it still has the violence and like <laughs> nothing not, like that. Not Hiddleston esque. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't insult the Mortal Kombat universe. And like the story is so dumb, and like everything about it is so dumb, and like a lot of the stuff is like quite poor, and some of the acting isn't great, mm. and a lot of the jokes are kind of lame. But like it's in a very very cheesy way. It's kind of fun. You know, it's it's watchable. Okay. Um, yeah. There's a what's his name Kang. I think he's no. That's mm. from Loki. Uh, anyway, the Australian guy, there's an Australian guy and he's like the comic relief and he was actually kind of funny. Like I mean, some of his jokes are kind of yeah, corny, but yeah. like oh. he, was, he was pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm above him. Humor-wise, but <laughs> I mean, I don't really I, laugh at that kind of, kind of lame, uh, <laughs> childish humor. <laughs> I watch Rick and Morty. It's more intellectual humor <laughs> I go for. Also fun fact, Michael Bisping auditioned for that role because he's a bit of an, bit of an actor. Um, which I actually uh, can see for, him... For which role? Rick and Morty? No. <laughs> As both. The Australian <laughs> guy it was like kind of like the, the... Kind of a Billy Butcher type, I guess. Um, ah, I see. But yeah, so... So you finally admit that Billy Butcher is Australian. Oh, f- <laughs> no, I've fallen right into the trap. <laughs> no. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's only taken it's like a like 30 it's episode only arc 60 yeah it's all culminated right here god horrendous but yeah no Brilliant. it's um it's pretty fun i don't know it's it's bad but it's it's enjoyable i mean you if you go in watch into mortal kombat and watch it and try to get like an oscar worthy movie out of yeah. it you're doing something wrong no, yeah. so if you go in knowing it's gonna be bad but you're there for the fun of it and there's a pretty good moment where he says get over here and that's like his catchphrase and i'm like very nice very very cool i think you had to see the movie to get that <laughs> no this moment when he says get over here and it was like oh, brilliant <laughs> also, yeah there's so many shoehorned references in there where they're like he like f- fights someone he's like flawless victory and i'm like ah <laughs> it's like oh my get god get out of here <laughs> Please. Yeah, i mean some of it is a bit cringy but i don't know it's 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 fun i think you would like it mm-hmm. okay all right <laughs> it's cringy and some of it's bad i think you'd enjoy it <laughs> It reminds me a bit of your performance in all of our podcasts, you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny sometimes, but mostly cringe and bad. <laughs> and always late. <laughs> God. Um, well, what about... Do you have any more, or should I just kind of ramble on about I mean, these? I've only got anime stuff left, so... Well, I'll, okay, I'll keep rambling I'll say on one. <laughs> Damn it. I'll say on. one. Um... Okay. So now I need to see which one I think you would 
laugh at the most. <laughs> Let's see which one you would bully me for enjoying the most. All right, I I know I actually I know actually no they're both we'll say both and you can judge me. Okay. Um. So the first one is called domestic girlfriend. <laughs> I mean. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, All I'm right. Open. So I'm he, open he, he, here's here's the plot of it. Here's the plot of it. It's like it's like a teenage rom com kind of kind of thing. Right. So it starts off with the main character. He's out with some some friends. There's a girl there. She's like, oh. I haven't lost my virginity yet. Oh, so you're frozen in this position? <laughs> Just the thinker face. She's like, I haven't lost my virginity yet. Let's do it. They do it. Never talk again. Until. His dad, who's, who's, I think his mom died. Not, not the dad's mom, but like his, the dad's wife and the kid's mom died. And he's like, I'm, I've decided to remarry. And then he marries the mom of the girl he just had sex with. The dad marries the mom. The dad marries the mom of the girl he just had sex with. Oh. And. So now they're the mom, step-siblings? So, exactly. And um. the mom is also <laughs> the mother of. Of his teacher in school, who he has a crush on, so then he's surrounded okay. by two women. Um, are you sure this was a an anime you watched? <laughs> this is this is not this is not something that begins with with H and ends in Entai. This is an, a proper anime. Because <laughs> this sounds um, this is this is a, this is a questionable thing you're telling me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm a little um. <laughs> I feel like this I, is, I knew you, you. I feel like this is I almost this not a, pod material. Get under your skin a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a world renowned show. Domestic girlfriend. <laughs> Domestic girlfriend. A world renowned so, show. <laughs> and then all sorts of adventures ensue. And I'm um, sure. I mean, I won't spoil it because I know you'll want to watch this. But uh, it gets, oh, gets kind of heated and crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. Okay. <laughs> On a real note, I. You know, we joke around. I would never shame you for enjoying your your anime like in a serious sense. This one, however. <laughs> <laughs> except now I, I feel like this one deserves a genuine shaming <laughs> I, I feel an intervention is needed <laughs> but go ahead what's the other one uh, the other one is the second season of Beastars I've, I've talked about the first season of Beastars on the show before so the OG fans will probably know but it's a Netflix anim, uh, anime show it's got a very like different uh, animation style and it's it's I see this is where you'll also judge for you. It's the one that's basically like um what's it called when animals basically take on like human forms and like act <laughs> as humans but they're animals. Zootopia esque. I think that's called um Furry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say www.imafurry.com. I think that's that's, that's, what <laughs> that's, that that's the one. That's, that's that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh anthropomorphized. Uh, yeah, exactly. Anthropomorphized. And, um, and yeah, like the first season of that show, so good. Also some questionable things. A wolf does almost have sex with a rabbit, but that's, let's not talk about it. But, um, <laughs> God, VHL is showing me his full nose. And it's terrifying. <laughs> I'm leaning into the camera to give you the, the hardest stink eye. <laughs> um, God. And it, it, it's... And it's it's kind of it's kind of fun. It's similar to Zootopia, where like racism is kind of replaced by like um, herbivores very much being afraid and like talking down to carnivores and stuff like that. It's a species divide here, I guess, but like it's like yeah, you know, it's got it's parallels a, a to, to racism. Bit of a social commentary. I'm I'm intelligent enough. I watch Rick and Morty. I I get social. I, commentary. I've seen this, I've seen a few uh, Rick and Morty episodes, and I got the social commentary of B Star season two on Netflix. <laughs> so you you might as uh, well give me a call, Harvard. <laughs> Please, Stanford. I'm I'm available. <laughs> I only run a podcast. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I would say it's a it's a little bit worse than the first season of B Stars, but still very very enjoyable. Well, there you go. Fair enough. I mean, um, all, all, uh, After this call ends, blocked on all social medias. <laughs> all of that stuff, uh, aside, you know, I mean. You, you, you have fun with that. <laughs> I 
sure it's an interesting show. I don't know. I don't know how to respond to this. I don't, what, am I, what do you want me to say? With with these with the step sibling like <laughs> thing you've brought up, and then the Zootopia porno. Like, what do you want me to say? I I got nothing. I, I just nothing. want you to support me for the man okay. I am. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> And the furry I want to be. <laughs> Good for you. And, you know, if it has, like, some interesting social commentary and some great animation, all that, all very wonderful. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> also, how do you sneak two Freddy anime hours into this episode? <laughs> I, I feel, I, I'll say this, I feel kind of condescended mm. whenever we get to talking about the things I enjoy. No, that's fair. That's very fair. I'll, I'll, tr- I'll try to be better with that. Again, mostly just for <laughs> moments like this, where I can truly, you truly deserve it. Because with some of the other ones, all right, whatever, and my girlfriend is my, uh, not what I expected or whatever. That one probably doesn't deserve the judgment that I give you jokingly. This one, this one, I should save it for these. So yeah, no, I'll, I'll be, I'll be better with this. Although, um, yeah, after this, we will be removing Freddy's Anime Hour from all programming. <laughs> we'll go back to the archives and take it out of every other episode. <laughs> Um, God. Well, speaking of things that deserve intense judgment from everyone, um, we both paid for and watched the KSI show. <laughs> right. <laughs> so God, um, that feels so long ago. Yeah, we were just boys back then. <laughs> now we are, but men. The, the KSI show got a lot of hate um, from the public. It did. I feel bad for the man because he was really proud of it. Yeah, most of it. I think most of it kind of undeserved. But some of it deserved for the way he marketed it. <laughs> no, yeah, I definitely think if he hadn't, like, obviously you have to market the thing and, like, put it up there. Like, it's, it's happening and watch it. But I think he made it sound like a much grander thing than what it turned out to be. And because he's, I get also marketing, like, you want to show off all the, the cool things in it. But, like, giving away every surprise definitely yeah, got people's like, expectations too high, especially the Logan Paul thing. And, mm-hmm. by the way, I want to say, if you thought he was... He was going to have a, an actual, like, sanctioned boxing match with Logan Paul in, uh, no, within the KSI show? You're an idiot. I'm, Or you're 12. One or the other. Because that's the, I mean... Or an idiotic 12-year-old. <laughs> that's just all of them. But, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, all 12-year-olds. Please keep subscribing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> 95% of our subscribers turn off. But, like... Do you know how boxing matches work? You can't... He's not going to have a boxing match. Do you even box, bro? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, this is the most condescending thing I've ever said. But <laughs> some of it... I, some of the criticism I felt was very vitriolic and, like, I felt like it was a snowball effect where people were kind of like, eh, like, mm. And then because it was sort of the popular thing to hate on, everyone's like, you know what? I also uh-huh. hated this and this and this. Like, I feel like if most people had loved it, all those people would have been like, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty good. Which I, yeah, I think it was no, pretty yeah. good. Just a bunch, bunch of sheep. Yeah, <laughs> come at me, KSI fan base. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like no, I, I definitely think music was good. Most of it. There's a few. What was that one song that was just you? god awful? <laughs> you. I actually you like KSI's KSI music, but you, that is a that is not a shout. You know, <laughs> the way he was that singing a, it, he you should like... probably whisper that very quietly. You know, <laughs> he was trying to like he was trying to like really sexy into the camera, and I was like, he's like, what the. F- are you doing? We watched this together. We were like on Facetime, <laughs> yeah. and it was, yeah, it was oh, that was, that was bad. horrific. But um, uh, no, I, I remember I was I was like 15 seconds ahead, and then I saw it, and I looked at I was like totally disgusted, and I looked down at you on the screen, and suddenly your brow just furrowed as well. You're like, oh my god, because <laughs> it's a real stinker. I'm sorry, it is. It's horrible. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's no, a better yeah. song than we could ever make, but like. I mean, debatably. The skits were fine. They, you know, some of them were pretty funny. Some of them were kind of cringy. But I mean, what are you expecting? Like, that's what, like, it's that's not... what the man is. <laughs> like, they were like expecting like award-winning comp. Like, these are the jokes that you guys make. They're like, oh, after they say "fat Neek for the third time, it's like that's literally all of the jokes you guys make. Yeah, like, I don't know that's... what you what you were expecting. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was fine. I thought the Logan Paul. Th- I, I think all this content. That Logan Paul and KSI made like on YouTube after that, like the podcast and stuff, genuinely and incredible. And also the fishing trip, also really, really good. Yeah, yeah, like lived up to all the expectations of it. It was very cool. They, have, they actually have great chemistry when talking to each other. Genuinely, that was great. Yeah. And the show was fine. It was yeah, it was more of a concert, but that's I don't know what you were expecting with all the music artists. I don't know. I thought it was fine. Fairness, it he, he made it very unclear what to expect. So I think that's some true. people, some people were were disappointed because they were thinking something much grander was happening but other people were like maybe the more skeptic of the of the group were like okay this is this is right yeah i remember like the day before i texted you i was like yeah i bought this but i i literally have no idea what this is 
No, yeah, exactly. I I bought it a minute before it started, and I still had no clue. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's quickly run through some of these. Well, let's talk about Black Widow a bit. Um, have you seen Black Widow? Mm. I've seen your review of Black Widow. It's basically like seeing the movie. Let's be honest. That's honestly better, I'd say. <laughs> um, better than expected. I have to say. Yeah. I thought we talked about it. I thought it was going to be a huge, stinking, mediocre, whatever. Um, Ant Man kind of. I, I realized my go to mediocre movie is Ant Man. <laughs> it should it's be really, Ant Man and the Wasp, nice. realistically. All right, Ant Man's. Okay. I haven't seen that, so. Ant Man's kind of fun. Ant Man and the Wasp is genuinely such a stinky <laughs> time. Yeah, I mean, it, it. I think my expectations being so low helped, but it, mm-hmm. it was more fun than I think I was expecting. It had. It was like action packed. It wasn't like just a typical origin where it's like, this is how she got her hair and her gun and whatever. Like, it has elements of that, but it's more about like telling an, a story linked to her origin in another yeah. time period. And uh-huh. it was a pretty interesting story, I guess. Not the, like, craziest or, like, most original ever, but it was it was pretty well done. And some fun characters along the way. Um, David Harbour is a, gets a little old, in my opinion, with his, like, I'm fat and I'm old gag. But Yeah, I, re- I, I really like David... Is it Harbour or Arbour? Harbour. No, yeah, I love him. Yeah, he's he's gen- generally really good, but I can I can imagine. He has a couple of standout moments, but yeah, no, it's um it's good. It's I'm trying to think what else did I say in my review? Uh Lu- Louis Dreyfus shows up. Oh yeah, well spoilers I guess, but yeah, from Tafaz, she's starting like a dark or not a Dark Avengers, um what's it called? Thunderbolts, which I think as our your boy Lele, uh friend of the show and friend of, you know, actual us. <laughs> <laughs> Actual us, <laughs> actual Winston Duke in the movie Us. Um, <laughs> he mentioned that it's like the Thunderbolts, which I, I I think was the thing I was thinking of, which is like a team of sort of sort of villains. Because um, I think General Ross also becomes like Red Hulk, who is in it as well. So I think that's what they're building to. Maybe on like the Disney Plus side of things. Um, she's so annoying though, Julie Louis. She is really this. like I I've only seen her in in Tafaz and God is. T- like she's meant to be. Good. She's supposed to be annoying, but it's like like but it she's really... supposed to be annoying in that way. Yeah, I don't think she's supposed to like genuinely irritate, irritate it within like like not just in the world, but like also just like as a presence in the scene. Like it's like the scene you, is you irritating. Screw the pooch, Louis Dreyfus. <laughs> Especially that scene where they're literally on the grave of Natasha and they're like and then she does like a gag where she's blowing her nose super hard. I'm like She's literally, it's the character we spent the whole movie, like, getting it attached to, and yeah. we're, like, standing on her, what's, like, her gravestone, and then you're mm. like, ooh, here's here's a picture of Jeremy Renner, and <laughs> it's like, what a disrespectful thing to do on someone's grave. Yeah, yeah please, do not, that's like dancing and pissing on someone's grave. <laughs> Seeing a picture of Jeremy Renner within a 10 mile radius of a grave, it's like that. Um, but the action was pretty good, uh... Taskmaster, I know everyone hated because he's not like the comics, but I thought it was a pretty badass suit and like badass action scene. And he does, or she does, like a flipping, like mirrored thing where she she's like has your mm-hmm. same you know skill set down. It's good. It's pretty solid, pretty fun. Uh, not amazing. Has some problems, but I thought it was it was better than expected. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. And I think now I'll just do my quick little run through of all these other things that I've watched and maybe like I'll say a sentence then you say a sentence we kind of just have a little have a little tr- a true mini review kind of thing okay okay let's let's hear it um <clears throat> I watched the karate kid for the first time 1984 classic it, it's super cheesy I really really liked it I thought it was very very fun it's like super 80s this is not, this is not the this is not the Jaden Smith one I no think. no no the original the original um okay, good, good, good. yeah super 80s very fun and like just harmless i guess like it's just like an easy thing to watch you know it's fun and mm-hmm. you know where it's going yeah. ends very abruptly i would say he kind of just wins and then it stops like there isn't i guess i was expecting more of like a creed like moment where it's kind of more of a build-up and like but he does the tournament and then he like gets the final one there's a bit of adversity and then he just crane kicks him and then it's like the end i'm like okay like, <laughs> but it was fun <laughs> it was very <Okay>. good <laughs> nervous laughter ensues <laughs> have you seen the cobra kai series or like i know you haven't seen it probably no but, like, well the thing is, I've been requested a lot to talk about it, and so maybe watching Karate Kid was the start of a journey to watching <laughs> Cobra God. Kai, which I would then eventually, Brilliant. by my track record, finish in like five when years. You're like twenty, yeah, and like when you're twenty nine or something like that. Yeah, you'll, you'll finish Cobra Kai. <laughs> but um, well, speaking of 
kind of martial arts competition movies. I watched Warrior. Um, Ooh, I've with, seen Warrior. Ooh, with the Hardy and the Edgerton doing a bit of oh, MMA so action. Good. As a as Wait, a huge Edgerton, Joel Edgerton. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. <laughs> God, I feel like he gets that reaction a lot. They're like, uh, uh, Mr. Edgerton. And they're like Edgerton. And he's like, no, not. <laughs> Not that one. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not tearing. You're tearing my heart apart here, please. <laughs> I, I wasn't bright, so um, feel free to pelt me with eggs as a result of that. <laughs> you know, I I didn't hate bright. <laughs> you know, for being perfectly honest, um, bright was actually not that bad. If we're if we're just saying, this is you in like a court <laughs> hearing. <laughs> I'm on the jury. I've got nothing to do with the actual case. It's for your hand. objection. Um, bright. Was kind of dope. <laughs> the guy was caught doing like grand arson. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> Bright is not altogether terrible. Um. Well, anyway, Warrior. It's very good. It's very you know emotional, well acted, well paced. Um, good drama. It's a bit cheesy, but in a, in a good kind of Creed way. Um, and I also I'll just say I found it amusing seeing the various MMA cameos and stuff in there, including mm. a cameo from actual. Uh, well, former UFC fighter, now Bellator fighter, Anthony Rumble Johnson as one of the fighters they have to fight, who is Anthony like... Anthony Rumble Johnson? <laughs> his nickname is Rumble. It's not his actual name. He, sound, he sounds like he rolls down a hill constantly. <laughs> oh, here comes Rumble Johnson. <laughs> well, anyway, he's an absolute, like, killer. Like, he, he has one of the hardest punches ever. <laughs> he's an absolute fucking <laughs> unit on the court. <laughs> And anyway, I thought it was very funny to see this man who, like, I've watched knock so many people out cold stand across from Joel Edgerton, and then he ends up winning, which is just the most amusing thing. I know it's like, I know Joel Edgerton is also even supposed to be not very imposing in the movies world, but to see actor Joel Edgerton face off against fucking Anthony Johnson was quite amusing. Also, that's also his nickname, fucking Anthony Johnson. (laughs) Just imagine Bruce Buffer saying that. Here comes <laughs> Anthony Joshua. Johnson. Joshua. Joshua. Ah. God. Um, then I watched a Clockwork Orange. Bit of a sharp turn here. Super disturbing film. Um, Clockwork Orange? You know, it's the one where the famous scene where the guy has his eyes, like, like oh, held like open. The... Oh. Yeah. It's a, like, social satire, super disturbing. Uh, it's an amazing film. Stanley Kubrick. Um, very poignant. Stayed with me for a while. It's, it's one of those movies that you watch and you're just like, "Fucking hell, that was, that was a intense experience." But um, very good film. Then um, I just found this amusing. I've been, you know, you know, Jeopardy, the the game show, iconic mm-hmm. show. Um, we I watch it with the family. You know, every uh-huh. I think it's on every weekday at seven thirty. You know, put it on. It's a good time. I just thought it was very fun that there was a question where I was like, "This person directed." The 2017 movie Get Out, and then someone on the show had to say, "quote Who is Peel?" So I just I found that a terrifying moment. In... That's that's quite good. <laughs> Who is Jordan Peel? <laughs> Philosophers will debate for decades to come. <laughs> um, Who and why was Jordan Peel? <laughs> then um, America the Motion Picture, this new Netflix thing. It's this super ridiculous animated movie about like if George Washington and Abraham Lincoln were like super bros and they had like guns and lasers and <laughs> one was a werewolf sounds, and it's fucking insane it's such a proper like america on drugs it's such a, it's a kind of rick and morty-esque like sense of humor i guess but more dumb but it was kind of funny i don't know i enjoyed it it was so, channing tatum voices george washington and he has like machine guns <laughs> and then like the villain is is like a werewolf and it's you know it's a mix of like history and then just this absolute insanity it's kind of funny uh, i don't know um, I, I laughed occasionally. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of mixing uh, American history and absolute insanity, I watched both National Treasure films back to back. Pray for me. God. Which, by the way, for a little peek behind the curtain, I suggested we do an episode on the National Treasure films, and Freddie mm. did in fact say something along the lines of, I have not seen them and I know nothing about them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very nervous. So, um, I, mean, I guess that... I, I think I might have to watch at least one of them. I think we, we would... This- we would we should watch it together we would have such a good time they're very okay. amusing and very fun to watch with friends or family and like kind of pick apart because they're so dumb but they're so fun like the logic okay. behind how this stuff goes and how he steals the declaration of independence and kidnaps the president and how the fbi like doesn't immediately murder him i mean that's not what the fbi does but like <laughs> the fbi doesn't garrot him on the spot 
but they don't take him out with multiple snipers as soon as he <laughs> walks into the Pentagon. <laughs> it's just yeah, we should we should do that. Then um Modoc, the show, I finished it, it's a Marvel show, it's pretty good. Uh, L.A. Confidential, a movie that uh, my dad loves that we watched together. It was very good. <laughs> L.A. Confidential, a movie. <laughs> um, it has DeVito and Crow and Guy Pierce. Um, Pierce and Crow teaming up, kind of, although they hate each other, then they team up because Crow mm-hmm. sleeps with his wife or something. I can't really remember. It was a while Classic ago. Classic Crow. But they're they're like they're police people and they're like opposite kind of um, style. No, DeVito, it's Crow De- who. No, it's Guy who sleeps with Crow's girl he's interested in but but she's so not his a, wife so there's a guy no it's guy Pierce. <laughs> also kevin spacey's in it which is unfortunate but you know that it is what it is uh, that's, um, uh... and then finally austin powers international bleh, international man of mystery <laughs> <laughs> Inter- <bleh>. <laughs> <laughs> which um yeah i watched and it was it was it was it made me chuckle all right it was pretty funny was that, was, was that the first time you've watched it it, I mean, I, like, I've, I know all the, you know, memes and, like, the pop culture stuff about it, but, like, it was the first time I'd ever seen it in full, and it was pretty good. It's so it's quite stupid good. and ridiculous, yeah. but that's the whole point, and it's it's very enjoyable. So, anyway, that was the, the quick, quick, quick. <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. The, the quick, quick, quick. quick, quick. quick. Um, now it's time quick, for... You know. <laughs> the time knews. Um, all right, let's see, cruising it up, cruising it up in the cruise. Well, I mean, um, <laughs> <You're> going insane. <laughs> <laughs> cruising it up in the cruise. Well, we continue our, our inexplicable Tom Cruise England tour news. Okay. Um, I don't know what, God, this is also such a narrative. Yeah. I don't know what this means, but Birmingham live have titled their article top brum. Tom Cruise spotted in Grand Central Birmingham. I don't know what Top Brum means, but I hope it's not like some top horribly offensive brum. word they put in the middle of their, their article. Yeah, it's, it's like criminal cited. <laughs> Hide in your homes. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the nationwide alert. Top Brum it means top danger. So Tom Cruise spotted in Grand Central Birmingham. So he was spotted in Faux Restaurant. So that's something, I guess. What's the Tom? What's the Tom Cruise become? We went from Tom Cruise <laughs> breaks his ankle to Tom Cruise <laughs> is a top brum in Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, because Tom Cruise used to do so much more cool shit. Like I don't know when he does like a stunt or something, or when he stands in front of a train like he did for that picture or whatever that was. Remember that? Oh, I mean, okay, he did stand in front. Of the train. <laughs> Yeah, that time he was uh, flattened you know, you know, by that, a train going the at full moment, speed. That, that picture that was taken moments before impact. <laughs> before that train rocked Cruz's world. <laughs> that train that Peg happened to be at the front of? I imagine... What? <laughs> 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 I imagine that if a train were to hit Tom Cruise, the train would break, but Tom Cruise would stand like a pillar, just not even faced. <laughs> I feel like it would be like a Mr. Incredible situation. I like mine more. <laughs> the lamest thing to ever say. You know, if you think about it, I think it would be a Mr. Incredible situation. Actually, I think Frozen would have a party time <laughs> with this one. Anyway, uh, now it's time for the announcements and such. Blah. The announcement. <laughs> <laughs> God, what's Austin Powers done to you? <laughs> Austin, <bleh. laughs> Announcements and <laughs> The announcements and such, recorded a few days from now. Or a week from now, I don't know. Whatever. Cool, it's here. And we're back for the announcements and such segment. I do not have Freddy on the phone. Uh, unfortunately, Frederick is off enjoying life and vacationing and not podcasting. Uh, what an absolute loser. But, um, yeah, Freddy is not available to record the announcements this week, so it's just gonna be me, a little solo announcements thing. I'm sorry, I know you're booing already, but we can we can put up with it for one week, I suppose. As we'll get to, in fact, uh, it seems like you all love Freddy more than me, so... Um. Yeah, I guess we'll have to power through this. Um, first things first, the poorly planned TikTok, I think we talked about. You can follow that, made by Kian, uh, post some fun pod clips. And um, I just noted, and I thought it was kind of funny when I visited it, there's a video where we talk about Mark Ruffalo's greatest goofs, and it is uh, marked as, like, some may find this offensive or some may find this disturbing, which I thought was very very fitting for a Ruffalo video. You know, that's it's definitely on us for making such a, an offensive and disturbing piece of content. And speaking of Kian, he sent in 
Now, a few, <laughs> a few disclaimers on this thing. He sent in that apparently you can get an APK of the Jeremy Renner app. Now, I will be honest, I don't really know what an APK is, um, so I cannot speak to the safety or legality of this thing. I think it's a thing for Android. I don't know. But um, basically, he said that he had found it, and then, in fact, he got into, I guess, a, a saved version of the Jeremy Renner app, a horrifying quest to undertake, National Treasure-esque. And he also sent in <laughs> a screen recording of what it of what it's like, which, by the way, I'm very sorry, for some reason, now Instagram won't let me open or save, which also, given that it's a Renner app, is, is probably fair. But basically, in the screen recording, you, you open the app, and then Jeremy Renner's there, and he's like talking about how, like, this is, you know, this is an app just for the fans, and we're gonna have a good, good fun time here, just for the runner, the runner boys, and, um, I believe Kean wrote that it, it felt very much like a, a The Ring type of video, where Renner will come after him in seven days and kill him, which, um, I appreciate your sacrifice, Kean, to get us, <laughs> to get us that screen recording, but yeah, deeply troubling and horrifying, but, um, yeah, thank you for, through your sorcerer wizarding means, finding a way to uh, see what the Renner app was all about, and it was exactly, exactly what I would have expected, and, uh, that is terrifying. Then JC Comics said he found, well, not said, he also sent a picture of, uh, a Rampage arcade game he found, which is pretty funny, given, you know, Rampage's dear place in our heart. I kind of often forget that it's actually based on a game, it's a video game film, but, yeah, there's a Rampage arcade game, that's where all those monsters got their strange names, like Ralph the Flying Wolf. So yeah, thank you, JC Comics. Um, then just some comments from Pod95, uh, great comments all around, just some that I've, uh, noted here. Kean says, the trivia reminds me of the Mr. Sunday Letterboxd videos where James only picks either the movie Joker or High School Musical 2. I actually have not seen those trivia videos, or the, the fake review videos. I've seen one of them, but I haven't, I have, I've not seen the one where he does Joker or High School Musical, but that sounds like an amazing premise, so I should, I should check that out. GC Green, episode 100, last minute idea, BHL and Freddy record an episode inside the Scientology Church of Copenhagen. Uh, wonderful idea. I don't know how they would feel about our podcast, but um, <laughs> maybe they'll they'll take us in and, and maybe they're huge fans. I doubt it somehow though. GC Green also said, today at my work on my lunch break, someone turned on couples retreat on the TV and I brought back the infamous Applebee's counter. My coworkers also found themselves laughing quite a bit. I must be working with a bunch of psychopaths. Yeah, I think we established that your uh, place of work, GC, is, um, I mean, if we needed any more proof that they should be evaluated, um, their, their mental state, <laughs> I think we found it by laughing at the movie Couples Retreat, a horrible crime that uh, only Frederick has committed or should have committed. Bit of a strange film to just put on in, the, like, the middle of the day <laughs> at work. But hey, go, uh, go to the restaurant, I guess. And then both Anurag and Movie Guy came through with extreme hate comments. Movie Guy says, I think Frederick should do the trivia from now on, suck at BHL. And Anurag says, judging from the trivia prep, Freddy should be running the pod. So I'm very happy that Freddy's not here for this announcements and such segment, because his ego would be uh, through the roof. When he listens to this, I'm sure he will be uh, more than delighted. Uh, so a bit of, bit of a mutiny going on in the comments section here, guys. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to talk about how, you know, I've been preparing the pods and editing the pods and uploading and pay to have them put on iTunes and all that and running the pod. You know, I don't, don't want to talk about how Freddy's just a lazy old bum who I have uh, come in to do the pod. But yeah, no, Freddy should totally do the pod from now on, you, you absolute <laughs> mutineers. I feel, I've never felt so betrayed in my life. But um, on a serious note, yeah, it was, it was great. It was super fun. And I will try to have um, more, uh, whether it's trivia, whether it's just like general different segments in the pod, I'll try to sort of have Freddy come up with some as well, because it was great, it, you know, it was very fun. Um, if his lazy ass can even get to doing those things, when he can't even show up for the announcements and such segment. Oh my god, there's a butterfly flying in my room. Um, anyway, but yeah, the trivia was, uh, the trivia was super fun. Then on my latest Reddit video on the BHL, I don't usually bring BHL matters onto the pod. Actually, that's not true, I, I do that kind of often, but um, I just want to point out a comment that I thought was uh, kind of cool, and also then <laughs> a bit funny, um, but... Deadshot said, where is it? After the video, I watched Knives Out and really liked it, and it made me think, you as a YouTuber can get people to see these crazy pieces of art films, and it could completely change people's lives or inspire them, and they would have never seen the movie if not off of your recommendation. 
I also might be a bit too high. <laughs> so, a wonderful comment, and it also applies to the pod in a way. And it's just a very cool thing to think about that I, and, you know, anyone else who does this kind of YouTube movie reviewing, and also, I mean, people in your personal lives as well, like, you can genuinely change someone's life if you recommend a film and they watch it and, like, it has a big impact on them. Or even sometimes not films, but, like, so if you're a song in something, then you check that out and it can, like, have, you know, an impact on your life. And, yeah, it's just kind of a crazy, trippy thing to think about that, y you know, being high might contribute to <laughs> thinking about these things. But I thought it was just quite cool and interesting. Like, I remember I first checked out The Nice Guys based on Mr. Sunday talking about it on the podcast, and now it's one of my favorite films. And, like, people have talked about that with our pod, that, like, I found this movie because you recommended it, and, like, I, I really loved it. Also makes it seem like we're abusing our, um, our power here on the podcast to recommend films, and then we talk about, like, Rampage and <laughs> Robin Hood half the time. But, um, yeah, no, I just, I thought that was a cool, cool thought, cool concept. Um, there are also the fan pages, nothing this week, but I suppose we can forgive it. I mean, Freddie's not even here for the announcement, so we, we're not really in a place to, uh, to judge at all. But the fan pages run by Kean and Pierce are linked down below. Um, there's also the TikTok, uh, run by Kean. Not sure if that's linked down below, but I should, I should link it. And also we're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you're listening there, we're on YouTube, the Poorly Planned Podcast. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, on iTunes at Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars. Great stuff. Back to the pod. Wow, oh my I can't God, believe those announcements. What? Tom can't Cruise believe... got hit by an actual train? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, thank you very much for listening. You can find me on YouTube, BHL Hudson, Instagram, Twitter, BHL underscore Hudson. You can email the pod at bhlhudsonvids at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram at... Wait, no. You can find me on Twitter at FDK underscore Dolt Sniper. You can find me on YouTube at, YouTube at FDK space gaming. And you can find me on Instagram at Fidalguard. You know, my favorite website is... YouTube. Get f***ing owned. Thank you very much for listening, and we will see you next time. Tom Cruise train! <laughs> that was the worst thing ever, because it cut off like half the audio, so we just go... Boop! <laughs> Boop! <laughs>